Welcome to The Land Far Away, where we discuss culture from a certain point of view. A long time ago, in 2002, in a faraway country, by which I mean Poland, a TV show was created titled The Witcher, initially known as The Hexer. It was a fairly faithful adaptation of several stories from the early collections, The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sapkowski, interwoven with creative ideas from the screenwriter Mikhail Shabitz. The show was mocked for its low-budget and laughable special effects, which was subpar even by 2002 standards. Furthermore, purists were quick to criticize the show's numerous deviations from the literary original. You have to keep in mind that the first PC game was released only in 2007. In 2002, The Witcher was solely a literary franchise, hence it was held to an even higher standard in terms of remaining faithful to the original story. To add insult to injury, in 2001, a movie version of The Witcher was screened in Polish cinemas. It consisted of clumsily edited excerpts from the series that ultimately premiered the following year. Disappointed viewers spread word of the pathetic adaptation, consequently undermining the series' prospects. It's quite revealing that the movie had a two-hour runtime, while the series comprised of 13 episodes, each almost an hour long. Despite everything mentioned above, Polish The Witcher series garnered a cult following in Poland and other Slavic countries, where it was also broadcast. While the production values might not measure up to those of more recent adaptations, the series managed to capture the gritty and dark essence of Sapkowski's world. Unsurprisingly, I am making this video now due to the complete failure of the recent series. I recall the excitement among Polish fans of The Witcher when news of a brand new, high-budget show emerged. Moreover, in 2019, Netflix still boasted a stellar track record with its original productions. Thus, the show had significant goodwill backing it, stemming from the perfect casting of Henry Cavill, Sapkowski's cherished source material, and the Netflix seal of quality. However, we are aware of how that mess of a show ultimately turned out. Nevertheless, Due to the failure of Netflix's The Witcher, the original Polish series is kinda reliving a renaissance these days. You know how lousy remakes don't replace the awesome originals. Instead, they enable the originals to shine once more. That's precisely the situation here. Declaring the 2002 version as great television would be an exaggeration, but honestly, I don't have a problem with calling it the superior show, for whatever that's worth. In what ways is it better then? First and foremost, as stupid as it may have sounded before the days of bait and switch, the polish The Witcher is truly centered around The Witcher himself. Mikhail Zebrowski portrayed Geralt of Rivia, bringing the character to life on screen. He had the looks, the voice, and the acting chops. Also, what cannot be understated, he had competent showrunners behind his back. The Polish series is the story of Geralt. At the beginning, he's merely a youngster who rigidly adheres to the witch's code and tries to approach the world around him straightforwardly. With each successive monster slain, including those in human form, with each additional wound and brush with death, this Geralt starts to see the world differently, ultimately becoming authentically weary of the world and the perfidy of people in the later part of the story. The only things that keep him alive are two close individuals, Yennefer and Siri. Polish series doesn't focus on action, spectacle, and special effects, which of course wasn't feasible, but it captures the essence of Sapkowski's prose, the complexity of human nature, shades of grey, the search for purpose in life, the importance of friendship, moments of joy and suffering, the essence of money, racism, and so on. All of this is presented in a traditional manner for cinema or theatre, through dialogue, acting, and creating the appropriate atmosphere. This series also doesn't create a separate storyline, but surprisingly adheres closely to the canon. Sapkowski is a master of intimate tales with a message, even when the rulers of the world came into play. The Netflix series practically eliminates the deepened plotlines and focuses on a story full of dynamic action, despite its apparent complexity, evolving into a rather straightforward narrative. 
Hence, it becomes accessible to a broader audience, by which I mean light, spectacular, sometimes brutal, sometimes shallow. Nevertheless, it lacks the main strengths of the novels, characters with flesh and blood, chemistry, dialogues, and messages. It's more of a trivial yet good quality fantasy. The Netflix series presents The Witcher to us as a horse brute. Unfortunately, throughout three seasons, we don't learn anything more about him. We don't see any transformation. We don't get to know him as a hero. He is exactly the same in the first episode as he is in the last. Cavill portrayed the character as a statue to an extreme extent, a superhero, which Geralt never was and never felt like. While secondary characters get at least some development, the Witcher remains unchanged. He has no inner conflicts. He is neither sad, happy, disappointed, nor angry. He can kill monsters well, and is the protector of Ciri. That's all. The Polish production took a different direction. Although Geralt can kick ass, he's no Batman. He's not a brute either. He has a whole range of emotions, which, by the way, Yaskir emphasizes in a conversation with Yennefer, telling her that Geralt isn't a mutant, that he's a human. And like every human, he has his feelings. Geralt played by Zebrowski, is a multifaceted character. He can laugh, be cheerful, sad, angry, brutal, and kind-hearted. Without a doubt, it's a phenomenal portrayal and the best Witcher we've seen on screen. These are two different Geralts, but the one from the Polish series is closer to Sapkowski's original. Cavill seems to have drawn too much inspiration from the PC game, of which he is a fan, which is evident in his rather restrained acting. It can still be appealing, however compared to Zebrowski, it comes across as less convincing. Let's also mention the matter of chemistry between the characters. The Netflix series has had a significant issue with this from the start, Blame lies with the plot, dialogues, and actors. As I've already mentioned, Henry Cavill created a rather stiff and almost unfeeling Witcher. This makes it difficult to build relationships with other characters. The Polish series had fewer problems in this regard. When we look at Geralt and Jaskier, we immediately see that they're friends for life. When we observe Geralt and Yennefer, we sense the troubled past. When Geralt meets someone significant, distinct emotions are felt, and we watch the character's struggles with sympathy. Oh, and speaking of Jaskier, in the Polish series he's a drunkard, lazy bones, and a ladies' man, but when needed, a true friend. Let's just say it's a very Polish archetype. The Polish series doesn't have beautiful, colorful shots. The strength of this series lies in its raw realism. Yes, at times the show looks like it was filmed with a home camera by film students, but this technique has its merits. It builds an atmosphere, thanks in part to the use of real locations, places, ruins, and castles. Netflix's series, especially the second season, which was created with significantly higher budgets than the first, is capable of showcasing beautiful shots with saturated warm colors. It's a more candy-coated world, once again more closely resembling the realm of video games, or perhaps more broadly, the contemporary way of making fantasy series. It might be pleasant in perception, but as a result, it lacks the appropriate atmosphere. It looks like a generic fantasy show. If the world of the Polish production series is more Slavic, then undoubtedly the one in Netflix is more American. This is not a criticism. Let's remember that in Sapkowski's work, this Slavic essence is mainly discovered through the language of the stories and mythology, not necessarily the construction of the world or its people. That's just how imagination works. Both versions present an intriguing picture of how differently a word can be interpreted. A separate paragraph can also be devoted to the costumes. This is actually a strong point of the Polish production. Geralt has a truly well-designed and intricately crafted armor, and all the characters are dressed appropriately for the scene. Or, undressed, since this show had a lot of nudity, including full frontal. 
Meanwhile costumes in the Netflix series, especially those of the sorcerers, give the impression of being too pristine, too opulent, often inconsistent within a single scene or environment. The witch's armor resembles superhero costumes from comics or Marvel movies too much, in my opinion. There's nothing to fault in the Netflix series when it comes to special effects and creature design. It's the highest tier achievable within budgets for series of this caliber. In the creature designs and special effects, you can see a significant attention to detail and a genuine desire to create something distinct that serves a crucial role in the storytelling. The Polish series faced enormous problems with special effects, resulting in memorable instances like the infamous dragon. However, let's remember that the dragon in the 13 episode series, spanning 13 hours, appears for about 10 seconds. The special effects didn't play a significant role here. When Geralt fights a monster, it feels like a thrown in inflatable toy. To put it plainly, watching this series for the special effects misses the point. A separate topic is the fight scenes, executed in a very spectacular manner in Netflix's adaptation. Blood splatters, heads roll, limbs are severed. It's engaging to watch, though on the other hand, it lacks a certain finesse. The Polish series didn't do fights better or worse, but it definitely has nothing to be ashamed of. Realism was once again prioritized. The fights are more captivating to watch because there's an element of unpredictability, and the emotions of those fighting are visible on their faces. It's an analogous situation to lightsaber duels in the original Star Wars trilogy, and the prequel trilogy, with the latter being flashy and heavily coordinated, but usually not as realistic and emotionally engaging as they used to be back in the day. Netflix's The Witcher managed to create more and more bad blood with fans with every season. Meanwhile the underrated Polish series, after all these years, stands its ground with a well-crafted narrative, masterful atmosphere, outstanding performance by Mikhail Zebrowski, excellent dialogues, and good music. It is also closer to the prose of Andrzej Sapkowski. It's such a shame that the show isn't readily available in the English-speaking world. As always, thank you so much for sticking around until the end of this video. I hope you found it enjoyable. Have you heard about the original Polish The Witcher series before? Or maybe you've seen it? Please leave a comment, consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and until next time, bye.